started off, I had a bug, a little 98 Volkswagen bug. Ever since I was a little girl, I wanted a red bug so I could put black spots on it and drive a ladybug. And um, it caught on fire twice. The cooling system that we just replaced went out. And by June, it just completely died. They told us it was going to be between six and 7,000 to get the engine fixed the way it needed to be fixed. That basically they were going to have to replace everything under the hood because this had melted and this had broken and this had fallen into pieces and it fell into that and this knocked over that and it was just like the domino effect of death into my engine. She had this red uh, car that was made like a little beetle, a ladybug and, and it was her, she loved that little car and it finally uh, died and so she uh, sold it for junk and one day she was at Walmart and she found her car in the parking lot. And she was so upset about it, she actually took a picture of it and she started to cry because she was so mad that they actually fixed her car and gave her nothing for it. And they fixed it and it's on the road and they even left the little dots all over it. Tony had a 2002 Corolla with about 300,000 miles on it. and. Uh, we, we reuse that for everything and in the summer it was fine because in the summer usually I only have like a week here of class or a week there of class because I just do my summer school stuff but I don't necessarily have to have a vehicle I can walk to wherever I need to walk to Tony would drop off the baby in the morning do his insurance thing and bring home the baby at night but when school started you know it was this thing like Bradley wants to do after school sports I'm sorry you can't because I can't take you to the games on Saturdays because daddy has to work sometimes on Saturdays So in January, my mom had sent me some money and we were able to buy this little used, it was a 1997 Corolla, it was even older than Tony's car, but we would at least have two. He was coming home and uh, he was driving through Richard, which is this little town outside of Church Point and it's very curvy, it's nothing but crawfish ponds. And he came around a curve and the curve continued and he didn't know. So he missed the curve and he went into about a six foot deep ditch. So the front of the car hit the other end of the ditch. He said, the white Corolla is the 2002, is gonna need a new engine. We're looking at six or seven grand. The car was worth about three. And then his dad showed up and said, well, I have this spare car. Like, you would just have a random spare car? So since January, we've been putting miles and dirt and french fries and everything on his dad's spare car while we try to figure out what we're gonna do. We can't buy a car. We can't say, I'm gonna make this note. if. We don't know we can make that note and it's just it's just been kind of up in the air so now we uh, we walk where we can which uh, was actually a lot more fun in the winter than it's gonna be now Financially, it's, it's you know it's been a struggle, but you know we still still try to have a good time, play games with kids, find stuff to do that doesn't cost very much. Oil is everything down here don't work directly for you know one of the oil companies you work for somebody that's dependent on the oil industry you know, even me selling insurance it doesn't sound like there's any relation at all the oil industry gets shut down for six months and nobody knows if they're gonna have a job or if all, all the businesses because there's a lot of uh, machine shops that build uh, equipment and stuff for the uh, offshore rigs and things like that they all lose their jobs and then you know and everybody was was really scared and that's why well, it was so tough for me uh, last year on food or you know absolute necessities they didn't want to spend it I heard a crash and the whole house shook and I honestly thought a car had just gone off the road and run into the house because it was so loud it shook the house so bad. Right after the crash and the shaking I heard just glass breaking and then I heard the baby screaming. So I got up, 
I ran in the next room because I'm right next to the baby and the branches of a tree had come in through the window and there was no storm, no wind, nothing at all going on that night. So I get up, I get the baby, I didn't even put shoes on, I didn't even realize I didn't have shoes on until we were outside. I got out the front door to see what had happened and the rest of the tree is on the porch and all you can see from the whole front side of the house is just tree. came over and people would just stop by and help us drag pieces of this tree to the street and then um, the next day a truck stopped and said well, what are y'all gonna do with the wood and Tony was like I don't care what happens to the wood I just want it off my house and so they hooked two different trucks with chains to pull it off the side of the house but one of my students her dad is the glass man in town and he's helped us before with other things and he was already at my house fixing the window and would not give me a bill. Like I went by the next day, I said, Greg, I know you came by and fixed my window. You know, I need you to give me an invoice and you know, we'll pay it, we'll put it under insurance if we have to, whatever. And he was like, oh no, that was a freak accident. It wasn't even storming, don't worry about it. I had extra glass in the back from an old house that was torn down. But people just kind of came together and were like, oh, there's a tree on your house, how can we help? And it was, it's pretty amazing. I believe that you know, God doesn't give us anything that we can't handle, but, you know, sometimes I'm looking at everything that's happening, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's, that's enough.